the business world. And uh, this afternoon, for the next one hour, we'll be giving you the latest updates from the business community. And we'll be having an interesting conversation of women in devolution. And we'll be speaking to Mary Mudoni, who is live with us here in our studios. She is the chairperson of the Women in Business at the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry. She'll be giving us a what is her take on the recent developments as more women make it into office in different levels of government. Well, let's start you off with the, one of the top stories now. And the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock and Fisheries has announced a multi-million shilling insurance scheme targeting livestock keepers who made losses as a result of drought that ravaged the country a few months ago. According to Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Willie Bett, this, there is actually an insurance plan for over 300 million shillings to bail out such farmers. Insurance companies such as Amaco, Jubilee, APA, among others, have been brought on board to serve the farmers. While addressing the press, the government disclosed it had put in place safeguard measures to restore trading between Kenya and Uganda poultry farmers, which was suspended after the avian influenza outbreak. There is the premium and there is a bailout. The premium is what government pays so that the farmers are insured. And we pay to the gentlemen on my left, the insurance companies. Now the insurance companies provides the CAFAS to, to the pastoralists. Now in the event, because the model we are using is there has to be a trigger. We are using satellite to, ind to indicate that the conditions requires that these farmers be paid because the conditions is such that they are going to lose their animals. Now, when we pay, because I said we paid 164 million as premium for the financial year, that premium of 164 has generated a payout to the farmers in two seasons. First season, it generated a payout of 215 million, which, as I said, was the payment was even done by the president in Turkana. Now, today, we are announcing another payment because the conditions in the asylum area has not improved. We are lifting um, the ban on these carcasses on three facilities in Uganda. And these are the facilities who have proved to the Kenyan authorities that they maintain high level of biosecurity. And um, these three um, facilities are Udani Manji Holdings Rainbow, SR Afrochik, and Kukuchik. Indeed, some relief there for dairy farmers across the country. Well, to a story that continues to baffle many, Family Bank has suspended afternoon tea for staff following bold measures expected to cut down on costs at the bank. In a memo from the bank's procurement and logistics department, the tea suspension took effect on Tuesday, August the 22nd. Beginning Tuesday, there will be no sponsored afternoon tea and only morning tea will be served that was part of the notice. In justifying the rationing, the bank said the move was thought of after a lot of debate and will help the institution save money at a time when the banking industry is experiencing challenges related to new interest capping laws introduced last year. At least three major banks, including Equity, Housing Finance Group and Cooperative Bank, have reported a reduction in their 2017 half-year net profits, attributing the fall to the new interest rate cap. The memo which was released on Monday left many people wondering what kind of savings a bank would make from just suspending the afternoon tea. For more of this, catch you a copy of the standard for more details. And we have with us an interesting uh, pull out there that just shows you what the memo read, saying that uh, starting Tuesday there will be no sponsored afternoon tea and only tea will be served, morning tea will be served. Quite interesting there. Moving on. With the uptake of off-grid power solutions continuing to gain traction, Global Farm Solar Century has rolled out a new model targeting businesses looking to invest in solar power. Business planning, actually businesses planning to purchase solar 
can now benefit simultaneously from a partnership between Solar Century and Cross Boundary Energy, offering financed solar solutions to customers operating in Africa. According to Dr. Daniel Davis, Africa's director for Solar Century, aside from providing commercial and industrial solar PV plants, the partnership will provide a unique financing offer for any business in Africa. Businesses are the major consumers of electricity in most African markets, and providing cheaper power through a solar PPA will not only reduce costs, but it will also reduce carbon emissions. From that, a Netherlands-based firm has lost a case challenging a multi-billion shilling tender to supply the government with the new generation number plates. The ruling now paves way for the rollout of the project that was to be implemented in 2015. J. Kenner BV had sued the government and public procurement administrative board last year, seeking to block implementation of the lucrative deal worth 2.2 billion shillings by a local firm, Tropical Technologies Limited. The Dutch firm had complained that PARB gave the tender to Tropical Technologies, despite the company allegedly having failed to pass the technical evaluation stage because it had not obtained a manufacturer's authorization which was a mandatory requirement at the bidding stage. But on Monday, High Court Judge George Adunga threw out the case, noting that Knairim was reopening a case that had already been closed by PPARB and the High Court. Just as Adunga said, when the board made its decision, the company never bothered to challenge it. The smart number plates are a critical component of a wider security plan by the government dubbed the Integrated Automated Management System, in which new generation driving licenses will also be introduced. The move is aimed at deterring fraudsters who use their vehicles as collateral to acquire loans. After three years of negotiations, Kenya Airways has signed a collective bargaining agreement with the Kenya Airlines Pilots Association, CALPA, to enhance productivity. The CBA is valid for one year and comes with no salary increment. However, it provides an opportunity for pilots to earn a productivity allowance for more hours worked beyond a certain threshold. CALPA called off a strike in October last year after fruitful discussions with Kenya Airways Chairman Michael Joseph, who had just joined following the departure of Dennis Awori. The national carrier cut their losses by 62% in 2017 to hit 10.2 billion shillings compared to 26 billion loss it reported in 2016. Well, some interesting developments there in the aviation sector. Well, let's take you now to the coastal region and crab fishing is gaining momentum in coastal Kenya. And this is why. Following a massive destruction of mangrove forest by poll dealers, a conservation group in Watamo supports its community by farming and selling crabs, directing its proceeds to conservation and education. Here's Ashley Missouri with that story. Situated at Mida Creek, not far from the Basso village, Crab Shack, also known as Watamu's Magical Paradise, is a discreet wooden construction standing at the edge of the mangrove forest with panoramic views of the creek. A small haven that attracts tourists from all walks of life to experience fresh marine delicacy prepared and served just within the ocean. The mud crabs are among crustaceans of commercial value along the Kenyan coast. They're not ordinary food. A meal containing 500 grams of the delicacy goes for around 1,500 shillings at the restaurant. Favorite yao ni kupata crab samosas. 
ni chakula ambacho kimevuma sana watamu na hata malindi na Kenya mzima kwa pamoja wageni wakifika hapa ndio kitu ya kwanza wanaulizia The 30 member group farms the crabs at a mangrove swamp, harvests and sells at their restaurant. To them, conservation is the major aim. The youth groups organize mangrove plantings and beach cleanups and have initiated several income generating activities including beekeeping, selling mangrove tree seedlings, crab farming and other aquaculture poultry rearing, selling handicrafts as well as doing an ecotourism program. Ka anatakikana apatikana akiwa ako hai mgeni aonyeshwe kabla hajapikwa. Kule kwa hoteli haiwezekani kwa sababu wageni wanapata kwa wingi pale na hawa, hakuna sosi ya kupata crabs uh, wakiwa live. Lakini hapa kwa sababu tunafuga kila kitu kinapatikana hapa live. During the low season the shark collects at least 20,000 shillings in a day. But during the high season like today they collect between 70,000 shillings and 80,000 shillings based on the number of tourists. Malengo yetu ni kama yametimia uhifadhi tumeufanya kwa wingi na unapendeza ikiwa pia tumeweza kuajiri watu wetu kwa wingi hapa Through Crab Shack the youths have managed to provide employment opportunities for the community and still sustain their livelihoods which has alleviated poverty and given hope to an area that had remained impoverished Ashley Mazuri KTN News